polls all across New Hampshire will open when the sun comes up in order for Granite Staters to choose who they want to serve in local, state, and national offices. And we are watching three major races tonight in the 1st Congressional District. Republican Eddie Edwards, Democrat Chris Pappas, and Libertarian Dan Belforti are vying for the seat currently held by Democrat Carol Shea Porter. In the 2nd District, incumbent Democrat Annie Custer faces challenges from Republican Steve Negron and Libertarian Justin O'Donnell. And in the race for governor, incumbent Republican Chris Sununu being challenged by Democrat Molly Kelly and Libertarian Jaletta Jarvis. Let's begin with that statewide governor's race now and how the candidates are focusing their energy in these final hours. WMUR's Amy Cavino covering those candidates tonight and she is live at the state State House in Concord. Amy? Good evening to you guys. Doesn't it feel like we just did this? I mean, it was just two years ago that Chris Sununu won the corner office. Now challenger Molly Kelly is hoping to hold him to just one term. Molly Kelly and Chris Sununu gave their final pitches to a room of about 100 Nashua business people. And by this stage of the race, the themes are familiar. And we're going to make sure everyone has opportunities. I'm going to make our schools safe for our children. I think that's most important to, to uh, parents and, and to children. Sununu emphasized his positive campaign and urges voters to check his record. I just ask people to look at the results of New Hampshire. You don't let the negativity of Washington define our success, define our results, because we got it by bringing people in, by being collaborative, by being positive, working together. That is what was the kind of the secret sauce, if you will, of New Hampshire's success. And some recent polls have shown this race tightening. Some polls show this race tightening by quite a bit. Tomorrow, voters will issue their decision. We're live in Concord this evening. Amy Cavino, WMUR News 9. And so both New Hampshire's congressional districts are choosing their representatives tonight. So we want to start our live coverage of those races with the 1st District, which has no incumbent running this year. WMUR's Jennifer Crompton is covering those campaigns tonight, live in Manchester. Well, you know, Eddie Edwards, and Chris Pappas both clearly have lots of energy left. Just within the last hour, both were out here on the streets of Manchester within sight of each other almost, trying to get the attention of commuters on this last night of campaigning. Republican Eddie Edwards out at the Amoskeg traffic circle in Manchester, waving to commuters and voters. It's been a long day of campaigning already, but he says his committed volunteers continue to push for him, and he wants to be there right alongside. I'm feeling really great. I, I mean, uh, we have been to every single city and town in the district. We've been campaigning all over the district today, meeting great people, meeting voters, meeting people who are telling us they're coming out for us, and it's just been fantastic. <laughs> Barely a few hundred yards away, Democrat Chris Pappas and his supporters hitting the corners of Elm and Salmon. The Manchester native says it's been a long campaign and he is feeling really excited about its direction. But he's running as if he's a few votes behind, taking nothing for granted. We feel like there's a tremendous amount of energy out there and we're just trying to get those last few votes we need however we can to make sure that there's a big turnout tomorrow and to ensure that we're successful. Both still have lots of hands to shake tonight. They say they'll be up late and then up early again tomorrow morning for another long day and night outside. We're live in Manchester. Jennifer Crompton, WMUR News 9. All right, Jennifer, thank you very much. The Congressional District 1 race is the one getting national attention. That's Eastern New Hampshire. And the winner will make history for the state. So right now we're joined by WMUR political director Adam Sexton and political reporter John DeStaso to take a closer look at everything going on. Gentlemen, hello. How you doing, Jen and Tommy? This is the marquee matchup. You've got Chris Pappas with the business experience and the deep Manchester roots, and then Eddie Edwards with the service record in both military and law enforcement. Pappas, of course, hits that sweet spot in the middle of the Democratic Party. Edwards, very conservative, but still holding down establishment GOP support. Okay. John, there's a lot of excitement across the board for these two candidates, uh, which is something you didn't always see with their predecessors, Frank Ginta and Carol Shea Porter. No, absolutely. Uh, by the fourth by the fourth time around, it became a little bit repetitious. But yeah, both of these candidates came through very difficult primaries. The, each party has coalesced behind each, each of them. Washington is watching this seat. Uh, you, have a, you have a conservative Republican, and I guess you call him sort of a mainstream progressive Democrat. He's well known because of his service as an executive counselor. Uh, Eddie Edwards, on the other hand, is uh, very, very, might not be quite as well known, but he has certainly been out there. He's been all over the place, as 
Both of them have. They've debated the issues. A key point of contention in this race has been President Trump. Pappas says it's time for checks and balances. Eddie Edwards says he's backing the America First agenda. How big of an issue is this for voters? I think uh, the congressional races reflect the national mood more so than, say, a gubernatorial race. And so I think we're going to see what happens uh, in terms of the kind of resistance, resistance to Trump versus those people who may not be polled, but are going to be out there uh, at the urging of, of Trump at his various rallies around the country. Uh, Eddie Edwards has not shied away from tying himself to Trump, as uh, other Republicans Absolutely. have. Had uh, Rudy Giuliani for him in town today in Manchester. Let's talk about the map. Of course, man, uh, Chris Pappas must do well in the Queen City. Yes. And then you talk about uh, the Democratic fortresses of Portsmouth and Durham. Uh, Edwards wants to do well in Greater Rockingham County. And then you've got that belt of Tea Party votes up through the Lakes region. Right. What are you looking at tomorrow? Well, Edwards hasn't totally given up on Manchester. He just has to make a halfway decent showing. He doesn't expect to win. But don't forget the other communities around, around Manchester. A very big community to watch would be something, uh, a community like Derry, Londonderry, Bedford, Goffstown, the Merrimack. Uh, these big Republican towns really have to show up for Edwards to make a, to make a go of this. And again, real quickly, some, a couple of these towns were represented by Pappas uh, as an executive counselor. So he's, he's actually the more known entity, even though it might be a Republican town. All right. And Tom and Jen, it could be, uh, we don't want to scare you here, but it could be a late night tomorrow. We could be here for a while. <laughs> We've we, had a few of those. We <laughs> expect it. That's true for sure. We'll get back to you gentlemen in just a minute Thank or you two. Both. Thank you. There are a lot of issues at play in this election, so we asked our viewers which ones were most important to them. In our online poll, immigration came in first. Here's what the candidates for governor had to say about the role of state government and immigration law. So uh, there are bo Border Patrol units uh, that do from time to time work in New Hampshire, but it's a federal program. Um, only when they uh, see that there is assistance is needed from either local or state law enforcement do uh, does law enforcement get involved. Uh, there have been drug seizures uh, uh, via those border patrol units. Uh, we haven't had many complaints uh, by them, and um, you know they seem to work well. And, and, and most importantly, I think they respect the uh, process in terms of. Um, you know, as people c come across, they, they, they respect them and they, they show dignity uh, in, in their, um, you know, dealing with them and uh, don't bring in the, the police unless absolutely necessary. I'm, I'm very concerned about what is happening with immigration in our country, here in our state. I believe that it is not the job of our uh, uh, police force to do uh, the job of immigration uh, forces and uh, that uh, I think what is happening is that it has been out of control uh, and that uh, Donald Trump needs to rein in his deportation forces and I would stand up to him uh, uh, and uh, to do that would stand up to make sure that that happens uh, and I uh, believe that New Hampshire is a welcoming state. We want to continue to be a welcoming state. In the second congressional district, incumbent Annie Custer is hoping to set a record for Democrats with a fourth term there. But can she hold off her challengers? We'll take a look at that race when we come back. And tracing the past that brought the candidates from such varied backgrounds to this midterm election. Our Commitment 2018 coverage continues right after the break.